Hello, how are you doing today? So I have some news for you guys and that is that from next week onwards, I'm starting a new uh, show on this channel called Back to Basics and getting started with Linux. Back to Basics will touch upon some of the basics. Uh, it's advanced level basics, not the very, very basic, but it's more or less like, you know, for the users like me, how to get most of your system. And there I'll cover all three platforms, Mac OS, Windows and Linux. And the second series that I'm starting is called uh, getting started with Linux where I'll go all the way from the beginning what Linux is all about which distributions you should use and how to install it on your system and how to use them and I'll cover you know a, a variety of distributions depending on which one I choose and uh, so that's going to be next week uh, today I want to talk about one of my favorite distributions that I run on one of my systems I also maintain uh, uh, always updated tutorial about this distribution and if you may have guessed it right is Arch Linux and um, as I said you know while I run you know uh, MacBook uh, Pro 2018 that I just got this is here this MacBook Pro 2018 the new one I also have Surface Book 2 and uh, I need these laptops for my film editing needs because Linux as you all know is not ready in that domain uh, but I also run Linux on my desktop for writing and web browsing uh, Artinic is one of the two distributions that I run all the time and uh, and and you know what uh, by using these two platforms I also feel that I am very well informed I'm neutral I'm unbiased and when I share my opinion it's based on actual experience and comparison with a distribution and not somebody who lives under the rock and somebody who has only used one distribution throughout his life so that gives me kind of uh, as a, it makes me a better journalist as well but the bigger question here is that why did I choose Arch Linux over other distributions? Uh, what, what does Arch Linux have to offer that others don't have? And that's what we are going to talk about today. The number one point is it's by the community for the community. One of the strengths of Arch Linux is that it's a pure community driven project. It doesn't play dirty games to generate revenues for its creators at the cost of what's good for its users. I'm not even aware of any organizational uh, structure of Arch Linux. The Arch page clearly says that Arch survives because of the tireless effort of many people in the community and the core development cycle. None of us are paid for our work and we don't have the personal funds to sustain server costs ourselves. That clearly shows that it's a purely community driven work and the success of Artinic shows that it has a very successful community behind it. But there is a little bit of organizational structure there where they have release managers and maintainers of the core components such as Pac-Man and main repositories. But beyond that, it's all for the people, by the people. And this has been working quite well for a very long time. So that's, that's one pro why I prefer Arch Linux. Actually, most of the distribution that I choose are the ones that are driven by community. The second point that I love Arch Linux for is that it's kind of pure OS. No, I'm not talking about Purism's OS. I'm, when I say pure OS, I mean that Arch Linux doesn't patch much. They literally don't patch at all. I mean, they do do some basic patching, but that is not their core policy. They discourage patching as much as possible. So what happens is that with Arch Linux, you get more or less like the Android, you know, uh, stock Android experience where, where you use everything from the upstream. So when you use a package that is not tweaked, it flows down right from the glacier, you know. You get what the authors of the project intended without any unnecessary patching by the Arch Linux community. And that's what I want. I want to use the experience that the actual author of that project wanted me to have you know not some middleman is meddling with it uh, the third point that i love i will I'll, I'll not be doing numbering because there are so many points so when i say third i'm just saying it but another point is that arch linux has one of the biggest software repositories there um, i've been using arch linux since 2011 and i have yet to find a package that is available for some, some other distribution, but not for Arch Linux. Well, minus, you know, very distro specific packages, but everything is there for Arch Linux. And the credit goes to the kind of mega bank of software packages called AUR or 
Arch user repository. It, it's, it's more or less like a, a, a user maintained repository that enables users to compile and install packages from source itself. So these are not pre-compiled packages, but they are the set of instructions that help you in compiling those packages. But the, the beauty is that you don't have to be Linux storewares to compile these packages. Uh, it just takes two commands and it's done. To make life a bit easier, there are actually R helper tools that simplify the process. I used to love your word or that's what they said but that has been discontinued but if you go to our helpers page you'll find there are so many different packages that you can use to very easily compile and install packages super easy no problem at all another thing is that users can vote on these R packages which actually helps users in knowing because there can be more than one R package because anyone can you know create a package build any can one can create you know set of instructions how to install it but voting helps you in identifying which R package to use because the more votes that package has means it's the better package it also helps developers because if there are some packages that become super popular then they may actually be adopted by the Linux community and they may actually enter the official repository which means you don't have to recompile them yourself the arch community will maintain them at the same time from the bugs point of view if there are any bugs or problems with our packages you will see comments because anyone can add comments there so you can read the comments and fix the problem then and there while you are compiling them uh, one of the packages that gives me uh, some trouble is uh, plex media server but every time you run our, uh, our package you will see users commenting that you know use this 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 and it will fix and install it so there is no problem uh, at the same time, Art Linux is also one of the distributions, one of the, in, I think some, in some cases, it actually competes with uh, OpenSUSE Tumbleweed, but in some cases, Art Linux is the first distribution where the latest, latest packages land first. If you are like me and want to test out the latest version of any given software, then Art Linux is for you. Though, as I said, in some cases, Tumbleweed may be competing with it, but uh, 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 Art Linux stays ahead uh, and I'll give you a reason why. Uh, the, the, another point that I want to highlight is that Art Linux has the best and the most comprehensive wiki in the Linux world. Um, there used to be time when Ubuntu documentation used to be the best documentation. It's not anymore. Now it's Art Linux. And uh, because it's all maintained by users. And since the users of Art Linux are so advanced that they know the problem and they can easily solve the problem instead of asking questions, very basic questions. So, so they go ahead and they keep the documentation updated all the time. So you get the best wiki in the world when it comes to Linux world. And the, another beauty is that these uh, wikis are not specific to Art Linux. You can apply the same uh, idea and same concept in your own distribution. So for example, if you are worried about how to fix FSTAB entry for Ubuntu, you can just go and read Art Linux Wikipedia. Not Wikipedia, but Art Linux documentation or Art Linux Wiki. I'll put the links below and it will help you. Uh, another point is uh, availability of almost all major desktop environments at your disposal. Uh, I feel that you know many Linux distributions are desktop environment specific. Ubuntu, for example, uses GNOME. You know, Linux Mint, uh, which is a derivative of Ubuntu, uses uh, Cinnamon. And I feel distributions like these, who are like derivatives of a derivative, should not even exist in the first place. Uh, distribution like Linux Mint are better off as a desktop environment than a full-blown distribution. They are doing so much unnecessary work. Anyway. Uh, but that is not the case with Arch Linux, where you don't have to have different flavors to be able to use that particular desktop environment. It's desktop agnostic. You can install any supported DE on Arch Linux at the same time without worrying about breaking anything. I mean, just try to install KD Plasma on Linux Mint and tell me what happened. So on my Linux, uh, Arch Linux machine, I have GNOME, Plasma, Cinnamon, Mate, and LXD installed. 
and all works you know without any problem i just log out and log into a dis different desktop environment so i can use different desktop environment on the same system without having to reconfigure everything all the time so i get a fresh experience every time and i also keep myself updated with what's going on there and that leads to the second point which is total user control in Arch Linux, the user is in control. There is no middleman collecting taxes and tolls. There is no business agenda or goals behind the project. Since you assemble everything, picking and choosing the parts that you want and the configuration that you need for your system, it's a system that is designed to serve you as the master and not the makers of the OS so they can generate revenues from it which is important, you know, that's one of the reasons why I use Linux. I don't mind commercialization of Linux, but I also want to have a balance. And I find a good balance in Arch Linux, OpenSUSE, Fedora, and Ubuntu. Other distribution, they tend to play some dirty games like Linux Mint. Uh, uh, one of the most important parts, or one of the most important features of Arch Linux that I love is that it's a, it's a rolling release distribution. So once it starts rolling, it never stops. I mean, I'm a huge fan of rolling release distribution. That is why I use Tumbleweed. And uh, I think that Arch Linux is one of the champions of rolling releases. Once you install Arch Linux, you don't have to worry about updating it every six months. You're always running the latest packages, whether it's the kernel or the desktop environment or applications. Uh, and I'm kind of obsessed with updates. Even my Mac and Windows systems, I run update once a day to, to make sure that, first of all, I don't have any bugs which can compromise my system. Second thing, if developers are working on something new, I want to use it you know, the very first day. Why should I wait and use a package that was written two years? So new packages offer so many new features. So I really despise those distributions that discourage people from upgrading their distributions. Why? What's the point? Anyway. But when you do run a rolling release distribution like Artonix, you are living at the edge. <clears throat> but when you're living, but when you're using a distribution like Artonix, you're living at the edge. You can you can play with packages that are being developed by their creators and developers. You don't have to wait for them to be released. There are unstable and testing repositories in Artinix that allow you to test and try packages before they are actually released and that's what I do most of the time. I must confess that on my system I have unstable repos enabled and that's how I you know rule you know that I keep up myself with the latest packages and nothing breaks to be honest with you and if something breaks you can very easily fix it because you know the internals of the system you don't have to go and google for stuff and that leads to a caveat there which is that since it's a rolling release distribution where things are you know coming all the time without much testing by Arch Linux developers unlike OpenSUSE Tumbleweed where everything gets tested so there are chances that things might break if you're play playing with too many new packages using unstable and testing repositories but the thing is you don't have to worry about broken system because if you're using Arch, you know that that's part of your life. That's the lifestyle you've chosen and you can very easily fix it. Uh, at the same time, there are tools like Clonezilla. So you can simply clone your whole system. And if something really goes crazy, you can just, you know, restore from that backup. Simple. So, so all in all, you, 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 you get a very well-rounded distribution, which gets you the latest, the greatest full control over your computing. And here are my final words. Uh, once you, you go art, you'll never go back. That's, you, you should know that. Once you taste pure, unbloated, fully customized system, you won't like distribution that makes decisions for you instead of ha giving the power to you to make all those decisions. That said, Arch Linux is not for everyone. It does take a lot of efforts and a user's desire to learn and try things out to make it work. You need to know stuff or you need to have friends that know stuff. I have a lot of friends in the Art Linux community. Josh is one of my friends there and he's very helpful. Uh, and whenever I get a problem, I chat with him on Google Hangout and he helps me in fixing the problems. And that's why I love the community because it's a very helpful community. But you need to be willing to invest time in doing your homework and learning stuff. Then they will come and help you. 
so this is a distribution for those you know who are willing to, to learn and invest time but if you're not willing to learn then it's not for you so the whole point is that uh, if you use Linux why do you use Linux what is the point you know do you use for privacy do you use for control do you use for just uh, to show off that hey you know what oh you guys are using Windows and I use Linux so you, you, you that's that really depends on why you use Linux uh, actually you know what I should do a video next time why why you should use Linux or why you should care about Linux and what kind of people should not touch Linux at all so uh, that that could be an interesting idea for a video uh, I can share my thoughts you know because over a year I have converted so many users to Linux that I do know where it makes sense where it doesn't make sense and where a lot of people actually get wrong they use Linux but they use it more or less like Windows XP what's the point of using Linux anyway so the, the, the point with Arch Linux is that uh, if you want to use our Linux you have to be willing to learn to put efforts and uh, to take control of your computer one thing that is quite clear is when you do all of that you also learn a lot about Linux itself why because while Arch Linux is not something where you do everything from scratch but you do assemble pieces so you do learn about the core components of a Linux based operating system you get comfortable with it you get familiarized with that during the installation process you know what is F tab you know uh, or how to set time or how to partition a hard drive so when something breaks you can use that experience knowledge at least you know where the problem is unlike a lot of other Fisher Price like distribution where you have no clue what's going wrong and you simply run to a forum and ask for well, things like that um, so so you have to be willing to invest time and resources in learning about Linux. but once you do that you also master Linux and I'm telling you from my own experience I used to run my servers on uh, you know using cPanels you know HostGator and everything and once I start using Arch Linux I now manage my own servers on DigitalOcean and Linode you know I, all I need is SSH and I'm done so so Arch Linux has taught me a lot about how to actually use Linux and I I'm not a sysadmin I'm just a self-learned self-made guy so it, it taught me a lot so if you're looking for uh, looking at a distribution that will also teach you about Linux then Arch Linux is the right distribution for you so those are my reasons if you happen to be an Arch Linux user please tell me why do you use Arch Linux and of course welcome you know welcome to the club uh, welcome fellow Archer and if you don't use Arch Linux please also share you know what kind of problems you face and why you don't want to use it or which distribution you use and why you use it that may also help me in my next uh, video where I'm going to focus on why you should use Linux or you should not use Linux anyway thanks for watching uh, see you in the next video I'll be posting an uh, interview also so what I am doing is I am posting an interview because I travel a lot and I meet a lot of people who are doing open source work especially companies who are building open source solutions so I interview them so I'm trying to maintain a balance between the community and the enterprise world on this channel uh, so the next video I'll be posting with a, with, a, with a company who does a lot of work in the big data space using open source technologies and I will continue these videos for the community as well and as usual if you love my work please don't forget to subscribe to this channel and if you want to support my and if you want to support my work because it's really important because this work is being funded by you so please consider becoming a patron I will post uh, the link to the patreon up there I don't know it's up this there this side I don't know whichever you can just look up I'll post the link and also the link will be in the description below please consider becoming a patron so I can continue doing all these great videos for you guys thanks for watching and please don't forget to let me know what kind of content you want to see here see you next time bye for now